Bastis the Leech Lord, leader of the new Warriors of Chaos Nurgle faction, the Fecundites. One of four brand new campaigns arriving with the new Champions of Chaos DLC, landing August 23rd for Total War Warhammer 3. In this video today, I want to quickly give you a spoiler-free overview of Festus' campaign, starting out by going over his campaign mechanics, skills, tech tree, and then at the end of the video, we'll discuss what his Immortal Empire start is like and answer the question, is this campaign right for you? The goal here is not to give you a full-fledged guide, but rather break down the campaign from the first turn to give you an idea of whether or not this campaign will fit your playstyle. You can quickly navigate to any part of the video that interests you the most by using the chapters in both the timeline and the description. Also, if you intend on picking up the Champions of Chaos DLC coming out and want to support the channel, you can find a link in the description and the pinned comment to Creative Assembly's reseller program that will give you a Steam or Epic Game Store key for whichever platform you prefer. Please, only pre-order if you're definitely going to get the game. Feel free to wait for any kind of reviews or the actual launch as this link will work for one week after launch as well. Let's get started here on the new campaign for Festus. Opening up on turn one for Festus, let's talk a little bit about his specific mechanics and things that he benefits from. So we're going to go ahead and open up this little portion that says the Leech Lord's Cavalcade. So vassals gain poison attacks and spread Nurgle corruption. Just like every other Warrior of Chaos, they have a special vassal bonus. They, he can brew plagues just like uh, Kugoth's Plague Father can, and then souls plus 25 when plague is spread. If you want to know some more information about Festus from a lore perspective, you'll find that video linked in the upper right corner. But when it comes to the souls, as you can see here, that is part of the new Warriors of Chaos rework that is coming alongside the DLC as an FLC. If you want to know more about that, I've covered it in a guide in the upper right hand corner as well. But with Festus, you also get your typical infections that you had from Kugoth, so you'll be gaining those infections from buildings, events, incubated captives, which means that you're fighting a battle and you've won and you can choose to um, get more infections as part of a uh, post-battle uh, result. And then looting, sacking, and raising settlements as well as spreading the plagues themselves. And you consume them using... Uh, uh, using the Plague Cauldron. So we see Kugoth here, and all of the symptoms, you'll notice, are exactly the same as they were for Kugoth. Just kind of quickly hovering over these. And then the same thing for the recipes. They're all exactly the same. But all of the base plagues are different. You'll see even the name of it. It says Festus's pox versus just pox before. And they are much different. So the infections are different. The, the Nurgle corruption might be the roughly the same. But this has got attrition minus 75%. Casualty suffer from all attrition. And Nurgle authority 1. Casualty replenishment rate minus 15. Festus's bubos. Infections. Nurgle corruption. Casualty replenishment plus 10%. This is not like this for Kugoth. And Nurgle authority plus 1. Battle healing cap minus 50% for non-Nurgle armies. Festus's ague has got 10 uh, infections when spread, 4 Nurgle corruption, but a whopping 20 growth. I believe that Pox was the growth one for Kugoth. I can't remember off the top of my head. But Festus's rot, you'll be seeing uh, 5 infection when spread, 2 uh, to Nurgle corruption, souls gained from battles plus 15%. That's the big one you probably want to use. And again, this isn't a guide, but this is kind of like, heads up. You probably want to use this to start out your campaign because you'll uh, enable yourself to get a little bit of a head start on soul, on soul generation. Also, leadership reduction and Nurgle authority benefits. And then lastly, we get uh, infections, Nurgle corruption, but Nurgle authority, missile resistance, and vigor in battle tired. So I actually really like that this has got a different feel than just simply playing through Kugoth's plague cauldron so i do like that quite a bit now also we have the path to zanbaijin and if you are not familiar with how this works basically all you have to do is accrue souls any way that you get souls either by putting it into a gift um by doing a battle by sacking a settlement whatever or raising a settlement whatever it does to accrue souls goes towards this meter and then every 10,000 30,000 and then 50,000 total uh, souls, you get sigils. And these rift sigils will allow you to basically create a rift network. A rift will appear here in your home province, and then other rifts will appear all over the map. So you have this really cool ability in this campaign to really go wherever the hell you want, which is nice. And that's not a Festus thing, that's a Champions of Chaos thing. And also you get the Eye of the Gods mechanic, Festus being a solely Nurgle uh, 
based faction. His authority is geared towards Nurgle authority. As thus, you can imagine, he's only going to be dealing with undivided or Nurgle marked units. So now that we've gone into kind of general kind of campaign mechanics for Festus, let's talk a little bit about his skills. So here's the, I guess he's not a great unclean one, here's the Leech Lord himself, and you can see he's not the most amazing stellar fighter in the world, because he's really definitely more of a caster and a support character. You can see that from his abilities here. So let's take a look at his trait, Dark Apothecary. So plagues last for three turns longer, making it so they last roughly about five turns, depending on, at the base portion, uh, depending on which plague it is. Um, I think, so let me take a look. Yeah, that base plague is up six turns, damn, that's pretty juicy. Um, also... Uh, battle healing cap plus 25 percent and that's going to be the name of the game for um, Festus almost called him Kugoth because he has an activatable ability called healing elixirs here so basically in an aura around him he will heal things or he has harbinger of pestilence it's one or one or the other they're mutually exclusive so you can either do damage in an aura around you also known as a mortis engine effect or you can do da or you can heal in an aura around you he himself does both magic and poison damage. Again, you're not really going to be using him in that capacity. He'll kind of just be hanging back behind your line. Keep in mind, you don't need to be in combat for either one of these, which is contrary to what is what is very commonly used with these, um, uh, what's it called, with these abilities. So you can just simply kind of uh, plop them on people and just get that a benefit or however you so wish. Looking at his actual skills, his Blue line is the same as it is for every new Warriors of Chaos character. He does have the Disease Bearer special trait here at the end of the blue line. And he does get this new Devoted of Chaos ability, which will allow him to get 10 and 15% souls gained from battle, which will stack up with his own play. That's going to give him 30% extra souls gained, which is lovely. Also increased experience gain up to 20% when you're fighting against forces of order. Red line is exactly the same. Remember, it is now segmented into non-demon units and into demon units. So um, across the board, if you want non-demonic uh, infantry bonuses, you'd find it right here. If you want demonic non-flying melee units, you'd get it right here. So basically, you just kind of go about this however you want to build out your army. For his casting line, it is that of any other Nurgle casting character with Arcane Conduit at the end of it. But with his unique line, he gets Sage of Contagion. Casualties captured post-battle plus 25%, which is juicy. Infection costs minus 25% for armies in a local province. Then for Doctor's Orders, it's going to further increase that healing cap up to, tw up to a total of 50% between the 25% from this one and and his um, innate trait. Also, Winds of Magic for Fleshy Abundance is going to be reduced significantly. So you're going to see lots of healing on this character. And we're going to take a look at his hero in just a little bit. And how that can play even more so into this. Bedside Manor is going to help with diplomatic relations. Casualty replenishment rate. And then gives or causes attribute fear. An apple a day increases his hit points by a whopping 25% as well as his mass. Then gives him the slime trail capability of, I think, either it's Kugoth or a great unclean one. I either one has it, maybe both. Clinical hygiene is going to have chance of spreading plague plus an additional 50% and then makes the entire army immune to contact effects, which is really nice because the army is the mark of Nurgle. And the mark of Nurgle, if I hover over this, you can see that it increases or it grants poison contact, increases hit points and melee defense, but it reduces melee attack and speed. So your army is already pretty slow. You don't want to get poisoned or frostbitten and then be even slower. Clinical hygiene is going to make it so that doesn't happen. And then lastly, Gardener of Nurgle is going to make him demonic, give a nice to uh, increase to his Nurgle authority, and then reduce the speed of the entire enemy army by 15%, which is lovely. He gets the Lord of Pestilence, which is uh, innate now for any and all characters. They have an authority-gaining ability. If they dedicate to a specific god, it will become that god's um, authority gaining ability and of course you'll get a penalty towards that antithesis which is in this case Zinch. Then Voice, Hearts, and Aura of Chaos. He has one quest item in the Pestilent Potions which is going to give him this ability right here. A Chain Hex which is unique to Nurgle and Chain Healing abilities but this will all reduce the weapon damage and melee attack of things on a 30 meter radius around him will spread enemies with the spread range meters of affected units affects up to five total units and there's no diminishing effect on that which is quite nice nurgle authority two casualty replenishment rate three and then melee defense four and physical resistance 10 that's quite lovely for him now i was talking a little bit about that healing right with doctor's orders and how he gets already a bonus to fleshy abundance which is a major a major heal he himself has a heal i'm going to switch over to my uh, exalted hero here. 
And if I were to dedicate him to Nurgle, and I'm actually going to load in a, a Nurgle character to show this guy off, they have an ability that allows them to get a bound healing ability. So you have so many ways to heal as um, uh, Festus's character that it is just absolutely disgusting. And I mean that in so many different ways. Um, that covers these skills here. Let me quickly switch on over to my save to show you off. To show, to show off some of those uh, Exalted Hero skills, as well as talk a little bit about the Gifts of Chaos and the Boons. Before we move into tech, though, just like I said, here's the uh, quick show off of the skills for the Exalted Hero. You can see Stench Ridden is going to give him an ability, Locus of Fecundity, which is just a straight up heal in an area. He also has Toxic Trooper as an ability that gives you melee damage reflection from Acid Icker, and then Armor minus 10 for enemy armies in local province, which is juicy, as well as Plague Feeder, which gives you Nurgle Authority or melee defense. And that's the kind of special Exalted Hero here of Nurgle. Moving into the technology tree, we have the same thing that's been represented in the previous two that we've talked about, wherein this is a special Warriors of Chaos solely Nurgle tech tree. You start off with rusted branding irons, enabling you to transition your characters up to marks of Nurgle, and also enables poison attacks for aspiring champions. Now, keep in mind, any I, something I did not talk about in the previous ones, aspiring champions are so strong now. Human Trials enables this so that they get Cloud of Flies, which gives them melee defense. Also, they get regeneration for aspiring champions. Demonic Pact is going to give fear to aspiring champions undivided of Chaos Chosen. Inscribed Chaos Armor is going to help with armor of your of your aspiring champions. Like Slime Trail for the champions. Let's see what else. Perfect Vigor for them. And then they get Locus of Fecundity. So you can really make aspiring champions so strong now with uh, the Warriors of Chaos both rework, but mainly, of course, the DLC here that focuses on it. And this will, again, follow the same exact route as you've seen before with Village and with Valkia, where in going up this top route will give some sort of bonus to things that have an active gift of Nurgle. So uh, battle healing cap plus 10% for each active gift of Nurgle, stacking with Festus's already at present 50% at max. Human Trials is going to give you some passive abilities to your aspiring champions. Rancid Structures, this is going to give you growth to your military buildings. Um, for example, Village gave you research to military buildings and Valkia gave income to military buildings. So this has that same kind of thing, only slightly tweaked and just kind of represented all the way down the line. Maddening gifts and virulent ble uh, blessings also granting you an army ability as well as increasing your max amount of gifts for gifts of Nurgle. You can see our, our top two blasphemous summons. It's going to help grant you some great unclean ones as well as doctor of death here. So just going over some of these really quick so you can see what they look like in Festus's campaign. Now for the Gifts of Chaos here, remember you're only going to be accessing purely both, well, purely Nurgle and then Undivided Gifts of Chaos. And they are just the exact same ones that you would have imagined when you were playing through another Words of Chaos campaign. But it is worth noting how well they really stack with Festus's mechanics. Growth per region plus 75 after winning a battle is just so disgusting. Enable replenishment in foreign territory. Nurgle is the king of replenishment. And that is true here with Ku. It was true with Kugoth. It's even more true with Festus, who just has so many ways to just layer into that. Then you get all the way down at the bottom here to get access to Nurgling's and great unclean ones whenever you so wish. And remember, anytime you invest points in these, the souls, um, upkeep or actually expenditure, it does go towards unlocking more and more and more of these and same thing with the undivided ones. But just to kind of quickly go over these before we jump into the path to glory. Showing off the path to glory real fast for Nurgle before kind of going into the campaign as a whole. Um, it's worth noting that we talked about village and we talked about how only chaos sorcerer lords can become devoted to uh, Zinch. And we talked about Valkia and how only chaos lords can be devoted to uh, Korn. But with Festus, the chaos lord can devote to Nurgle, the hero can devote to Nurgle, and then the chaos sorcerer lord can devote to Nurgle. The only one who cannot devote to Nurgle is the Chaos Sorcerer. This is unique here because Zinch doesn't have this capability and nor does Korn. So you have the ability to pretty much choose anyone cho jumping over to Nurgle if you so wish. You just have to recruit the right character except for, again, the Sorcerer. Keep in mind, though, um, you do 
have to make sure that when the character is transformed, they will be half the rank of their previous form and all skills will be reset to be chosen again. And any active boons of chaos are lost upon transformation. And a, a question that I've seen asked in the comments quite a few times is, can you make it so that they don't have to do this? And yes, there is a technology here. You can bypass the thing entirely by just using powerful patience. This makes it so that enables direct recruitment of exalted heroes of Nurgle. And then also levels, 50% of levels kept when devoting a character to Nurgle, so they no longer have that 50% penalty against them. So I just wanted to cover that real quick before going into some campaign overview. Now, for a quick campaign overview of Festus's campaign in the Realm of Chaos campaign, I know most people are going to be playing through Immortal Empires, and that's next, of course. Um, it's interesting because Valkia is super high aggression because she's Valkia, and Village is actually way more aggressive than I thought he would be. And Festus, I think, fits very similarly into Kugoth's playstyle of being a slow but very steady and powerful ramp. With the ability to use these plagues and have these plagues increase growth, you just get so fat so quick. And no pun intended here. You can just rip down, or I'm sorry, build up your growth so quickly that you can just get a disgusting amount of income. I found I was having so much money. By turn 21, I had pretty much this whole entire portion taken. And that's kind of a big thing with Festus is that there doesn't feel like a natural progression point when you jump into this campaign at first. Uh, with Village and with Valkia, it's pretty clear cut. You know exactly where the next Dark Fortress is. But for example here, the Ice Drake Fjord, well the Doom Keep, that's where Daniel is. And that's right over here, right? Or you can go up to this location where there's another dark fortress or this one where there's another dark fortress and by turn 22 i had three dark fortresses it was just really really a strong power ramp and i found myself at such a high strength rank and with the ability to pretty much just eat through things because festus can just mortis engine everything down and heal everything it it became a really really strong campaign fast now you can and this is what i really like about festus's campaign more than the other two because the other two are right over here right village is right there and Valky is like right around right around here. What I like about Village is you can just immediately jump into the old world. You can with with Village. I'm sorry, with Festus, you can right away. You can with Village too, if you so wish. But I think that his campaign almost lends itself to telling you, no, go attack Marienburg. Because Marienburg is a dark fortress. It's like right here. You can just go right down into it and go do it. So you get a little bit slower of a start with Festus, but by the time you really start to get going, you get going real fast and you get really strong. And the ability to use this gift that allows you to enable replenishment in foreign territory and with this disgusting amount of uh, replenishment that you get, you're just going to be on a rampage. It's it's hard to stop this character once he gets going. So that's to give you a little bit of a, a, an idea of how that Realm of Chaos campaign plays. Remember, with the past of Zanbaijin, it's such a passive thing that once you actually hit it, you could teleport all the way over to Cathay if you so want, and to have this big plague empire over there. It's, it's really up to you. But that's a little bit of an idea of how that works. Let's jump into the Immortal Empires campaign and then close off with a discussion on is this campaign right for you? So looking at the Immortal Empires map, we have a start that's vastly different than both Village and Valkia. Both those characters start in the corner of the map. Even Azazel is in a better or at least stronger position than well stronger position for alliance than festus festus starts at the brass keep in the old world completely surrounded ostland's around him nordland he has to deal with midland right here and then he's right above hochland that he has to just immediately contend with so this puts him in a pretty unique position and it's a good thing that he has so many tools at his disposal because he has the ability to really rampage and, exp and expand quickly because of his casualty replenishment, the ability to replenish that casualties, well, replenish those casualties in foreign territory because of gifts. It's good that he's in a situation that he's kind of being slowed down. So you'll find yourself beset on all sides with Festus in Immortal Empires in, I think, a pretty good way because your next pro natural progression point is not Talapheim, as you can see right here, or Hergig, which is are both major settlements. It's Middenheim. So you're immediately going to be jumping into the capital of the Middenland right after you quell or even before you quell Hochland. So you, you really kind of have um, your work cut out for you. 
you're going to be fighting against Toddbringer right out the gate, and then it's going to put you probably in a really good ramp right down into Altdorf. So this campaign is very fun, and it's very different than our other two lords that we've talked about already, but I do think that this is going to be a little bit more challenging only because you have got no natural allies. You do have, uh, what's his name, Kazrak down over here, but, I mean, he's a beastman. It's not like he's going to be able to uh, subjugate and help expand out into a bunch of um, vassals for you. Whereas Azazel up here has vassal options to his west and east. So you do have to worry about that. Also, you have to worry about the fact that Kislev's right here. So if you expand east or south, you might bump into them way quicker than you might want to. And Draka is right there as well. So trying to find natural allies is going to be a little bit of a harder thing with Festus. But I think with his capability to be very stocky and last the test of time, you'll find that this campaign will be challenging but fun. I think more challenging than the other two and maybe more rewarding than the other two because you have immediately you start beset with adversity all right so the ultimate question here now is this campaign for you now i personally don't enjoy using nurgle units in combat they're too slow for me so i don't really get as much enjoyment out of it so with that being said when you if you are okay with jumping into combat that is a little bit slower paced you're going to be spending a lot of more time passive and healing and being reactive rather than just being full force aggression like you're like you are with corn like you will be with slanesh and you actually were with uh, village then this is probably going to be the campaign for you it is much slower of a burn in the very beginning but you'll find that that slow burn leads to a raging tide and that's a kind of a cool mechanic behind festus uh and zan Jin, if you want to pursue that it's less of a it's less of like an oppressive um objective than say the realm of chaos but one thing i've really noticed with all with the warriors of chaos is that they're very strong campaigns you're a very strong player in this campaign because you don't have to deal with the realm of chaos mechanic on the realm of chaos campaign in the immortal empires it's a little bit different but i still think that festus's ability to slowly build to a strong economic stable platform and then just rip out from there allows you to really have a lot of fun so if you struggle with always dealing with having to make an income building and, and econ is a really weak part of your of your play style and it's something that you always ha uh, have a hard time with festus is going to be able to fill that gap so easily for you and you'll just have a lot of a lot of fun either auto resolving your way to victory which is nothing anyone wants to hear because it's just nurgle's auto resolve is really rough every time you choose it it's going to really punish you but as you ramp up, you won't care because you'll ca your casualties will replenish so fast that you don't give a crap. So if you don't want to actually jump into combat, you want to just auto-resolve, you definitely can. Uh, again, with that being said, it is not as aggressive as Village and Valkia. It, there is aggression attached to it once you kind of hit a little bit of an econ ramp and everything. But I think that if you're okay with that level of slower play style, this will absolutely be one that you're really, really going to enjoy because I think Festus, by and large, is a more interesting and a, a a better support character than Kugoth. Kugoth is is basically a, a platform, uh, an artillery platform that also has the ability to cast uh, Nurgle spells. Whereas Festus can either heal or damage things around your army as things come in and then use Nurgle spells too. So I find it to be a little bit more in the face, a little more active than Kugoth, who just kind of felt a little more, I don't know, not as fun. So that is your breakdown here of the uh, Festus the Leech Lord campaign. If you have any questions about the campaign, if there's anything I forgot to go over, please by all means let me know in the comment section below. Because those the Plague Cauldron for Festus is super strong. And you're going to find that is going to be the thing that's going to give you the sharpest and quickest ramp is just spamming the growth plague on your um, your your capital, spamming the casualty replenishment plague on yourself, coupled with the gift that enables you to get uh, casualty replenishment in foreign territory, and you'll take off. You'll take off so fast. Like I said, I had three dark fortresses by turn like 25 because I was just able to expand so quickly moving north into Norska. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, all that fun action, but have a good one and take care.